Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another unboxing and today I was meant to do a review, a review of this guy right here. But a box just came in the door from Hobby Link Japan. You know what it is? So I'm unboxing this first. <laughs> So this right here is pretty much a model that doesn't need any sort of introduction, but I'm gonna give it one anyway. This right here is the high resolution model Gundam Astray Red Frame. Of course, everyone knows the Red Frame. By far one of the most popular Gundam designs ever, and rightly so, it is so damn cool. I built the Master Grade especially for this, just for a comparison, that is an epic kit. If you don't have it, you should have it. But sadly, I've never gotten around to the perfect grade or the metal build just yet. Maybe I will at some point, hopefully. But for today, we're gonna be busting this thing out. If you don't know what a high resolution model is, it's basically the mix of a figure and a model kit. The inner frame is a figure and the outer armor parts are a model kit. I'm still completely confused as to why they do this. Usually people who want a figure just want a figure, and usually people who want a model kit just want the model kit. But anyway, that's enough about that. Let's get this out of the box. And once again, this video right here wouldn't be possible without those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you want a high-res Gundam Astray red frame of your own, then you can check out that link down there in the description. So around here on the back of the box, we do have a whole bunch of information about the model kit. So let's take a quick read through that. Of course, I'll just abridge what it's saying instead of going through everything word for word, but I will pop it up on the screen so you can read it at your own leisure. So first off, we've got a bit of a gist of what the high resolution model is. Like I said, it is a pre-assembled inner frame. Here it says it's made out of metal, but if I remember correctly, it's only partially made out of metal. The English is a bit out of whack in here. I don't see how this is going to give you a variety of sensations. I assume what they mean by this that is that it's a mix of plastic, metal, maybe some different textures or colors, which makes it look interesting, but I doubt it's going to give you many sensations. Again, one thing I did notice about this is that particular inner frame is extremely bulky for the red frame, so I'm not sure exactly how this is going to turn out in the end, but let's keep going on. As for weapons in here, we have the iconic Gerber straight katana. It looks like we have some extra movement here in the shoulders. This was definitely one of the weaker joints I felt in the Master Grade. They could have moved a little more forward. We'll see how it is on this guy when we get the frame out soon. It seems we have some kind of sliding gimmick in the forearm. Some more information on the articulation here. I found the articulation was one of the best parts of the Master Grade, so will this be better? If so, it's going to be fantastic. And it does mention here as well that they have changed the way the inner frame looks to resemble musculature. This changing of the original design is definitely something we saw in the last two high-res models. That, of course, was the Barbatos and the Wing, both of which had a more unique stylized look, which fairly deviated from the original designs. It says here that hands gripping swords was studied to make sure these look as natural as possible. You'll also notice that the hands of the red frame have been completely changed for this design, and they look pretty badass. Now this right here is a very interesting approach to the change of the style of this mobile suit. To give it more of that kind of samurai vibe, they have divided the foot into toe sections, just like a samurai's tabby. Basically those old school Japanese style socks that separated the toe from the rest of the foot for wearing with sandals. That is a cool and unique design aspect there. That is pretty cool. It seems on here we've got a variety of die cast parts and looking good so far. Some parts of the armor have been given a texture, obviously to add to the different dimensions of this kit to make it high resolution. Can't wait to see what those look like. And finally, as well as the katana in here, we also have the beam rifle, shield, and beam saber. So if you're like me, you're already sick of looking at this box, so let's bust this thing open and see what we've got. So as usual in a high resolution model, we've got the model kit aspects on one side, which of course are the runners, some decals, and then of course a whole lot more runners. There's not a crazy amount of runners in here. So this seems like it will be a pretty simple build. And of course on the other side then, we've got the inner frame, which should be pre-assembled in here. Let's take a look at the runners first, then move on to the inner frame. Of course, not to forget the manual in here, and this is chock full of more information. I'll throw that all up pretty quickly instead of going through it too much. We've got some information on the red frame itself. So that's all about the Gundam Astray red frame, what it's based on. Then we have some information on the katana, the Gerber Astray. Basically the gist here is it's a big, massive, awesome katana. And finally then we've got some information on the beam rifle. And it seems like this is pretty much your standard Gundam Seed-esque beam rifle. Around on the back we've got some more information again. We can see the frame there, how to apply all those markings. Some info on the model's frame, it says that it has been painted, has die cast parts and screws. But the one thing that stands out to me here is that word right there. Stability. 
I've built two of these models before and at first they were great, but one thing that they are not in the long run is stable. So before you build this guy, I would recommend investing in glue. Finally then there's some information on the surface treatment. All of that will be up once again for you to read. So there we have Runner A, which is a multicolor runner. Of course, as you can see around here, and I assume this goes for all of this kit, it is brand new for this year, Bandai Spirits 2018. And this has a red which is a little bit darker than the Master Grade. We've got the light gray there for on the sides, a lot of gloss black as well as a little clear green piece, which I can only assume goes in the head or in the beam rifle, but we'll find out soon enough. Runner B then, another bunch of light grey parts, nothing too interesting on here. Runner C then is more light grey parts, I assume these are for going underneath the gloss white to give it that real grade-esque two-tone white, and we've got two of that Runner C. Runner D then are the white parts, this is in a super high gloss, which we've seen multiple times with the high-res kits before. So far looking good, and we've got your basic standard master grade level of detail here. E then, again in that super high gloss white, the parts are looking very nice and there is our first look at one of those textured parts. I'm not sure how well that turns up there, maybe I can turn down the camera a little bit so it's a bit darker, oh there we go. There is the texture, that is pretty cool. And this time around we have two of Runner E as well. Runner F in red, the same shade of red as the multicolored Runner A, once again we have two of those. Runner G is in a darker blood red. As you can see up there, this is an ABS this time around, and there are the hands. So we've got some open palmed with the fingers together hands, some widespread open hands, some holding hands with bent fingers, and what look to be either clenched fists or your standard style holding hands. I guess we'll find out what those are soon enough as well. H is the back of the hands, that new style separation of the red and white joints. So not exactly the way we're accustomed to with the Astray. I'll stick a picture to the side there so you can see the way they used to look, or the way that they normally look, just for reference. Again, this is an ABS, super high gloss, and it seems like we've got four pairs of hands, a total of eight. Runner eye in a dark grey, so it seems like some of the black sections may be split into two different colours. We've got the shield, as well as some of the backpack, and the hilt, of the Gerber Estrade. Runner J then is the gold parts, and unlike the Master Grade, these aren't in a metallic injection. These have been sprayed pretty much exactly like the Master Grade Hyakushiki. So that's what looks like a base coat of a silver, followed by maybe a clearish yellow or metallic yellow. So that looks a damn sight better than the Master Grades there. That looks pretty cool. How this will React to being cut out, I don't know yet, it doesn't look undergated, so you might end up with a few nub marks on there, which is a disappointment. Lastly then, we've got some pretty cool beams, these are flat, with a kind of roaring energy section there towards the hilt part of the beam sabers, but this is from 2013, so this is not new for this kit. Lastly in here then, we have the decals, these sadly are sticker style decals, with a kit this fancy you think you would get water slides or rub on, they are a pretty cool design, but I have to say I am disappointed they're not water slides. So of course the last thing to take a look at in here is the inner frame. So that comes packed in a separate box like this, slides out like so, and there it is. So finally there is a quick spin of the inner frame, and although the box said that this was profound, visually appealing, beautiful, and I'd be getting a variety of sensations from it, it doesn't look that fantastic. Actually, it looks somewhat basic. I had seen some pictures some people had posted on Instagram of what this looked like, and I thought it was all just the one color. Having it in person, I can see that it's two slightly different shades of red, but not really enough to really differentiate them. Of course, the majority of this is going to get covered up with the armor, which looks like it's pretty cool looking so far. But man, they really talked this thing up on the box, and it's pretty basic to say the least. And by basic, I mean basic looking. However, for as for how this thing is built, how it moves, let's check that out. So the first thing I'll mention about this is it's quite stiff, which is a good thing, because the one thing that my high-res Barbatos' knees isn't is stiff, and it just keeps flopping over. So anyway, as for the head, we've got a bit of up and down. Doesn't feel like a whole lot, actually, it's quite a bit. The more you tug at it, the more loose it gets. As for side to side, it kind of clicks past a point there, but there we are, side to side. Doesn't seem like we have a giggity giggity in here. As for the arm, let's try raising it all the way up. The whole torso comes up there, and that seems to be as far as it will go. 
As for those shoulders that are meant to come out quite a bit, they do come out quite a bit. Does that mean it can fold its arms? Because I love me a model kit that can fold its arms. Most can't. Oh yeah, never ever putting the armor on. Just leaving it like this. But seriously though, that is good. Hopefully it doesn't lose much of that once the armor's on. But so far, so good. There is the arm all the way around and this is quite detailed so Potentially, I may miss some aspects of the articulation on here, so forgive me for that. We have a full spin up there. Let's try out that bend at the elbow. And, ooh, it's already limited. Is it? Can we get more? Isn't there meant to be a sliding gimmick in here somewhere? That seems to be it. Yeah, we don't seem to have any more than that. So, ooh, that's pretty cool. This must be where the armor attaches. And that does move somewhat as you bend it. That's cool. The wrist just seems to be your standard ball and socket, and I didn't count these hands when I was talking about the extra hands, so it seems we have a grand total of five pairs, ten hands in total. So these are the fists, so the other ones must have been holding hands. Next up then, moving down the torso to the ab crunch, and there it is all the way to the front. I'm so afraid of breaking this before even getting into the actual review. There it is to the back, so that's okay. Not fantastic. There seems to be a bit going on back here. Some things seem to be sliding. That looks nice, but it's not crazy. How about this side to side there? Ooh, we've got some up here. Do we have any down there? Yeah, we've got quite a bit in the side to side there. How about rotation? We can rotate all the way around at the waist. There's a little bit up here. Very little. There may be more, but I'm kind of terrified to... Uh, push any of the parts on this too far. There is a reason I leave articulation to last in all of my reviews. That's because it's the most likely time I am going to break something. So anyway, there is the kick all the way up to the front. Because he's naked, nothing gets in the way. Actually, it seems we don't have anything interesting in and around there. His little wiener down here, that seems to move up and down. So that must move the front skirting. Oh, he's got a little joint in the middle of his wiener too. So let's see if we can bet. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Anyway, put, put that away. Okay. Oh, I take it back. There is a little bit more going on in there than I originally thought. See, I might miss some things. As for the legs all the way out, we do get the splits. It's not really much point of checking it to the back, but yeah, it goes all the way up. He can put that nearly over his shoulder. Oh, man, I'll admit it. I just heard a click there. Anyway. I tried to rotate this all the way around to see what it can do, and then it clicked at that point. It doesn't click anymore, but that does rotate all the way around, but I wouldn't recommend uh, doing that too much. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, it does come off. Get back on there. Next then, let's try out that bend at the knee. There we go. Ooh, we've got two joints in there, and that is a solid bend. An odd bend, though, too. Does this go further? No. I've never seen a Gundam knee bend at the bottom of the joint, like right here. And this part only is kind of supplementary bend. So, one more time, that's how it bends. Unusual. And it seems this whole section, look at that, that's all separate from that. That is unique. Very unique. At his feet then, we have down and up. As you can see, the toes aren't on this, so they will be part of the armor we add on later. We've got these two little segments here, do they move? Feels like they don't. I'd say armor just rotates and pivots on this section here. As for the pivot on the foot, there we are side to side. Not crazy, but not bad. And it seems we don't have any sort of bend at this section of the foot. Just when we add the toes on later. Okay, I was just playing around with it there and something clicked and I got even more. So as for the side to side pivot, it goes from whoa up there to whoa down there. And I mean, that's even towards the outside. Look at that. That's nuts. So even though the frame here doesn't look quite as awesome as I thought it would, it's got a whole lot of articulation and it feels as solid as a rock. So far, so good. Considering some of the armor is quite flashy in its super gloss white, maybe this will look quite nice when all of that is put on. We do have some metallic painted parts on this, like the parts are actually die cast metal and they're painted. At least the ones I can see are these ones around here on the back of the leg. They look pretty cool. But either way, I'm going to reserve judgment till the actual review. I'll try and get this up as quickly as possible. As always, any questions you have about this, any comparisons, anything you would like to see in the review, drop them down there in the comments and I'll make sure to see that that happens. But anyway, as always, if you do want one of your own, check out the link in the description. Get yours at Hobby Link Japan. And I'll do my best to get this review up as soon as possible. This right here is a priority. But anyway, I'll see you then.